Hey everyone, and welcome to today's live session. So this is Gayatri here, and as you all know, today we are going to be doing reasoning. Uh, coded inequalities are uh, to is a topic wherein questions will be pertaining to inequalities. Inequalities are uh, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, or equal to. These are the general inequalities that come. So in these questions, you will be given some variables and some symbols will be given in between the variables and each symbol will represent an inequality. So um, what we will have to do is you will have to decode the information for each symbol, write down the relationship between the variables in terms of the inequality and answer the questions that follow. Okay, so let's just start solving the questions. So let me share my screen. Generally, how we see questions on inequalities is at times they give you symbols. Okay, each inequality is represented by a symbol and the statements are given based on these symbols. So you have to decode the given symbols and write them in terms of inequalities and then combine the decoded inequalities and uh, try to get the answer. So let us look at this question. See, in this question, they have given some symbols which represent inequalities. So how do we go about solving such questions? What I would say is first try to write down uh, or decode the given symbol in terms of inequalities and keep that handy so that you are able to solve the question faster. See whenever such questions come generally there will be three or four questions that accompany a set. Okay, There will be three or four questions in a set. So what I would suggest is write down what each symbol represents. Okay, Once you write that down that will be useful for you throughout the problem. See in this question what does at represents? At represents P is neither greater nor equal to Q. That means that at represents less than. P is less than Q. That's what at represents. Okay, so P stands for less than. Similarly, take percentage. P is neither smaller nor greater than Q. What does that mean? P is equal to Q. So percentage stands for equal to symbol. Similarly, and. And symbol P is not greater than Q. So what does that mean? P is either less than or equal to Q. Correct? So and stands for less than or equal to. Similarly, dollar. P is greater than Q. So this stands for greater than. So if you write this down, this will be useful for you throughout while solving the question. Okay, are there only four? Okay, there is one more symbol here. See the symbol. This stands for P is either greater or equal to Q. That stands for this. So just write this down and then go about solving the question. Now let us look at the first statement. So how do you, a lot of you are giving me the answer as 1. Okay, so let us look at this H and K, correct? So what does that mean? See, whenever, once you have written this down, writing these in terms of the inequalities becomes very easy. So that's why I say, always write, decode the symbol and write it down. So that it's easier for you to solve. Okay, H and K means H less than or equal to K, K less than or equal to N, N greater than W. So that's what is given. And what are the conclusions that is given? First one that is given is N dollar. Dollar is greater than N greater than H. Second one is W less than H. See, as I said, when such question comes, if you don't write it down like this, what we will end up doing is, okay, H and. So what does and represent? You go back to the question, read it, try to put in the values. No, that's a waste of time. That will not work in the exam. Okay, when we, we have very less time to solve the questions. So always write it down like this so that you are able to speed up your calculations. Okay. So, uh, first one is n is greater than h. So, let me write down the statements together. What is given? h less than or equal to k. k is less than n. And next it is given as n is greater than w. We can't combine these two. Right? That's why I am writing them separately. So, definitely from here you can see that n is definitely going to be greater than h. Or I can say definitely h is less than n. Even if h is equal to k, h will still be less than n. So, the conclusion 1 is definitely true. Now, let us look at the next one. W is less than H. So, see, what do we know here? We know that N is greater than H, okay, and we know N is greater than W. But do we know any relationship between W and H? No, we don't know any relationship between uh, W and H, right? So, with the given information, we cannot say that W is less than H. So, this conclusion does not follow. So, only conclusion 1 follows or that is option A. I think everybody got it correctly. Let's move on to the next one. So, 
H. Okay, again, let me just write down these symbols here by the time you guys give me the answer. See, if you write down these symbols, as I said, you have to just write it down only once and solving becomes very, very easy. And um, C means greater than or equal to. Okay. H, C, K means, so what is given in the question? H greater than or equal to K, uh, K equal to R, R less than N. That is given, the con first conclusion that is given is N, C, K. So, N greater than or equal to K and R equal to H. These are the given conclusions. So, okay. Now, let us see. So, I am just combining the given statements and writing it. H is greater than or equal to K. K is equal to R and R is less than N. Or I can say H is greater than or equal to R. Correct? Or H is greater than or equal to K. Both this you know. R is less than N. That is all is given. Now, uh, N is greater than or equal to K. See, with this given information, we know H is greater than or equal to R. Correct? Similarly, R is less than N. So, what are they asking? Again, H is greater than or equal to K. K is equal to R. So, what does that mean? Definitely, conclusion 1 does not follow. Correct? Conclusion 1 does not follow. Similarly, R is equal to H. Can be, cannot be. Conclusion 2 will also not follow. Okay? I hope it is clear. See, if you combine these statements, you get H greater than K equal to R and R is less than N. So, we definitely know that N is greater than R. Okay? Or that means that N is greater than R and here definitely N is greater than K. It cannot be greater than or equal to. Okay, I hope it is clear. N can never be equal to K. Definitely N is greater than R. So, conclusion 1 does not follow. Similarly, R is equal to H. Now, again that is also not true. R can be equal to or greater than H. So, both the conclusions do not follow. That is option D. Yes, everybody is getting that. Let us move on to the next question. R dollar T, correct? So, again now the symbol, same symbols. So, R dollar, dollar is greater than, correct? So, R dollar T, uh, T C means, T means greater than or equal to M, M percentage means equal to J. Similarly, J percentage means J equal to T, at means uh, J less than T. That is the statement and the given conclusions. So, what can we say about the statements R greater than T, T is greater than or equal to M and M is equal to J. Or we can say R is greater than T, T is greater than M or T is also greater than or equal to J. So, T is definite. Now, they are asking us the relationship between T and J. See, what can uh, the relationship between T and J be? Either T is equal to J or T is greater than J. Correct? Either T is equal to J or T is greater than J. So, here uh, what is given? J is equal to T, J is less than T. These are the two conclusions that is given. So, either conclusion 1 is true and this is false or this is false and this is true. So, either or. Correct? That is option C. Either conclusion 1 is true or conclusion 2 is true. Either 1 or 2. Yes.